Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to talk about clip looping in Pro Tools. All right, off we go. First thing is in order to do it, you want a clip selected of some sort. I'm going to do this little snare sample here. So we're going to take that and loop it by going up to the clip menu and selecting loop. So clip loop if I want to loop a clip and we will have a couple choices on how we loop. So one is just how many times do you want to loop the material? Another is how many measures do you want looped? So do I want 16 measures of this loop? And then another is, do I want to loop until the end of the session or the next clip that it hits on that track? And then we have one more choice, which is enabling a crossfade between all the iterations of the loop. So if you feel like you're getting clicks and pops wherever the loop crosses over into the next one, you can enable a crossfade and choose you know, some short, probably couple of milliseconds uh, crossfade on all those places. Okay, so the first way I can just choose the number of loops. Let's say I want four loops. I click OK, and there are four loops. And you'll see at the bottom right of each iteration is a little loop arrow showing where how much material is part of each iteration. So we can now see that there's four loops there. OK, let's try it another way. Clip, loop, and here is my dialog again. This time let's go with length of loop. So the actual loop is two measures long. So let's do an eight measure loop length. So I should get a total of eight measures here. So if the first one's two, I should get up to where this chorus one starts. And that's exactly what we got. So now we have a total of eight measures from measure five to 13. All right, I'm gonna undo it again and then clip loop again. And this time, I am going to steal a little bit of audio and put it down here so that we have another clip there. So you can see that it'll stop looping once it hits this other clip. So I am going to clip loop again. And this time, we're going to choose loop until end of the session or next clip and then hit OK. And it will just loop whatever it takes to get to that next clip. And if that next clip is not an even iteration, so we know that our iterations are two measures long right now, say that this came earlier, it would just truncate a little bit the last iteration. So it would just shorten just enough so that it fits to wherever the next clip starts. And I'm gonna undo yet again. When would we maybe use this clip to next clip? So sometimes if you have some dialogue, for instance, in post-production where you have like a, a scene that's in a room and you have some room noise. So you, you might need, let's just pretend like this is some room noise. It looks like it's nothing at all. Here we go. Let's take a little bit of empty sound from this guitar track and paste it right here. So let's say this is room noise that you need to fill in the space between separate dialogues. So one of the nice things about that clip loop feature that where you create it until it hits this spot. You can just take your room noise, whatever length it is, and clip loop, and then I take that room noise and just loop until the next clip, which might be the next dialogue in your scene or something. So then you have this nice filler kind of white noise that makes it sound like they're actually in a real room in between those moments when they're actually talking. So that's one nice circumstance for using that loop until next clip. Okay, one other thing you should know about creating these is that if you have two separate clips, so I just separated these two clips, or this two measure phrase into two separate clips. Now, if I try and select both of those and then go clip loop and click four, what it's gonna loop is just the first clip. So what I actually ended up with is now a one bar loop that actually overwrote the one that was there. So it will only loop the first complete clip that it finds in your selection. So say that you do have two separate clips that you want to loop as a pair. In order to do that, you need to make sure you group them first. So clip group and then loop the group. Okay, and this time let's just go with 
four loops again. Okay, modifying clip groups. So in order to get to the place where you can modify the group, you can actually do a couple of different things. One is select with the grabber and go clip loop, just like you did to start. And you will actually get that same dialog back and you can change the number of loops if you want. So it knows there's four currently. I can click six now and hit okay. And it will just adjust that loop. So that's one way to get to modifying. I'm gonna hit undo. You can also right click with any of your edit tools and choose loop right here. And you will again get that same dialog with all the features that, you, that are possible for your clip loop. Okay, also to edit, you can move them with the grabber however you like, right? So I can grab, use the grabber to move things around. If you have the grabber or the selector at the bottom right of the clip of any of these iterations, it'll turn into this little hand with an arrow on it, which means that you can select a specific iteration. And then if you want, you can copy and like paste that iteration over here if you want to, for instance, uh, and it remains a loop. So that's one way you can do things. With the selector, if you, if you hover, it also turns into like a little selector with a little arrow on it. And then you can click and drag and select multiple iterations of a loop as well. So that's one way you can select chunks of a loop. Then with the trim tool, the trim tool is really great for loops because what you can do is in a regular place inside, we can just trim the length of how long it's gonna loop for, right? So I can click and drag from either side. I'm gonna undo those just in case I caused any problems. And then if the tool is over the icon, it will change the length of the loops. So the individual iterations will change length. So if this is just to trim the entire group, right, the length of the thing, each iteration right now is two bars notice. So it sounds like this. Cool, so it's a two bar phrase that happens. If I use the trimmer right over the arrow at the bottom here, or near the arrow, I can shrink the loop length down. And I'm not gonna do that in slip because it's kind of guaranteed to not sound too great. I'm gonna do it in grid and I'm gonna cut it in half. So now it's gonna loop every one bar. And I can drag and click again and get it down to, say, half a bar. So I can also go down to a quarter note if my grid will let me. And down to an eighth note. And then I can spread it out. So you can end up doing really creative things just by changing the length of the iterations this way. It's pretty fun. And I'm gonna get it back to the original length, which was two bars. Cool, so that's all back to where it was. And that is a very useful feature is the trim tool. Very nice way to adjust your loops. And then of course, if you want to do kind of a cool effect like that, like maybe it loops for a while at two bars like it is, well then I can always cut a piece of one of them off and then loop them at a different rate. So if I go here and hit, here's my regular loop. And then it shrinks here. And I don't love the way that worked. Let's get it back. I'm gonna separate right here at the downbeat. And then I'm gonna use my trimmer to shrink it a little bit. So you can really play around, it's pretty fun. So then what you can do is some creative things. Changing the loop length in different areas will get you some cool effects. And then I can always grab to get back. I can always copy and paste this like any other clip group. So we have this moment of a different rhythm. Kind of fun, right? Okay, I'm gonna undo all that good stuff. Cool, so you can change your pattern with the trimmer by doing it down near the bottom. And then 
we also have a special loop trim tool. So to get that one, you need to go up to the trim tool and hold down, and you'll see there's some other ones, and one is labeled loop. You can also do it by right clicking and choosing, so either click and hold or right click and you can get the loop trimmer. And that guy will do all the same things that the regular trimmer does, but if you have another clip that's never been looped, like this one right here, the loop trimmer lets me just create loops right on the spot just by clicking and dragging. So I can grab any bit, any clip anywhere and just with the loop trimmer on, I can create loops. Notice we're getting our little iteration arrows here. So you can, if you're planning on doing a lot of looping of different things, you can just grab any bit of MIDI or audio and just start looping it right with this click and drag using the loop trimmer. So a nice extra feature and it skips having to go clip loop in the menu. So you have a tool that's specifically designed to just create loops just by clicks and drags. Uh, another thing you should know about looping audio is I'm actually going to unloop this guy with a right click and then unloop and I'm just going to remove it. There we go. Okay, so here's my original loop, right? What if you have a little bit of audio that's just short of two bars like this? If I choose to loop this a couple times, do you know what's going to happen? I bet you can guess what's going to happen, right? We're going to loop a downbeat here early ahead of bar seven, and it's going to end up out of sync. So hold on, let me do it just so you can see. So it's too short right now, right? And I'm going to go number of loops like four again. And now notice it doesn't work out. And if you play this back, you're going to end up with downbeats in the wrong places. Do you hear how now the music is off from the click? So it keeps getting more and more off. So one of the things that happens when you're looping real audio is it doesn't fit exactly into the bar. The clip doesn't exactly fit the bar, but it still fits in rhythm. You just want it to loop with this little bit of space here, right? So that you get this plus the space in order to return to the next downbeat when it loops. So in order to do that, you just need to create a clip group out of this that includes the space. So you take this guy, you select the space two, do it in grid, that's always a good idea because it'll keep it on rhythm, right? Then you go clip group, and then when you do your loop, clip loop, and I do my four or whatever, now, there we go, we've got our four loops, and now notice it's also incorporating that space into each of the loops. So now each loop starts in the right place in the rhythm, and it just happens to have a little bit of space in it um, that is very likely to happen in any kind of sample that you're repeating. So just turn it into a clip group if it doesn't fit nicely in the bar and it's not looping quite lined up. Okay, last thing, getting rid of loops. So I can right click and choose unloop, that's one way, and we will get a couple of options. You can also do it from the clip menu, clip and then unloop, so right near loop. So let's do right click and unloop. And then you're gonna get a couple options. So cancel, of course, cancels this completely. Flatten will take these four loops and just turn them into regular clips, right? So it will just write them into this track and they will no longer be these special uh, loop clip iterations. And then remove gets rid of all the looping and returns you to the original just single clip. So if I choose flatten, these will just become normal duplicated clips. And there we go. There's my duplicated clips. So no real change in the audio there, right? Now I just undid that and now I'm going to go to unloop again. And this time I'm going to choose remove. And when that happens, you just lose all the looping that happened and you just have your normal snare drum part from the beginning. Cool. So hopefully all that makes sense. Uh, it's really easy. You also have a special tool just for creating loops called the loop trimmer. You just pull out and loop as far as you want to go. Uh, it's pretty easy, pretty intuitive. 
and to change the length of the loops the trimmer is also your friend there right so you just uh, click near the bottom of the clip and you can shrink the iterations down all right that's it for that one see you in the next one